Hey, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about a lot of mistakes that I see people in Blender do, especially beginners, mainly beginners, and that that's what this is aimed for. I want people to maybe save some of the headache that I've had over the years um, <laughs> making mistakes. And trust me, you're going to make lots of mistakes. It, it's pretty normal. But there's some really big ones that I see often and they could easily be avoided. So that's what we're going to go through today. It's really going to be more of a talking head video, so you don't need to see me speak. Uh, I'm going to be showing a little bit on the screen, but other than that, you're more than welcome to listen and just sit back. Uh, so the first one is, and this is actually kind of goes along with another one, but your topology is one of the more important things. And when I say topology, I don't mean the actual topology itself, but how the item goes together. Now, here's an example we have two tables made completely separately. One is one singular object, one is many objects. Actually this here is just an array. And I ask you guys as an audience which one looks better? The one that's one solid object or the one that's many objects? Now think about what you're modeling. It's really important. You wouldn't make a table out of one object. You will rarely see any table that's just one solid piece. Well, maybe the plastic lawn furniture uh, tables, but actual wood tables that you would have in your kitchen, they're not going to be one solid object. So why would you model it as one solid object? Now, I, if, if that's what it calls for, great. If you need to have one object modeling, like a can or something, sure, don't just use one, one object. But think about how it goes. A table is going to have multiple planks. It's going to have different legs. It's even going to have hardware. That's something I always see a lot of people, and I didn't model that here, Here, but you're going to have bolts, you're going to have screws, you're going to have something that's going to attach it to the table. All those should be modeled, even if they're not actually going to be seen, they're going to help with the light redirection and light reflections, and they might be seen. If you were to shoot it from, like, say, this view, or a weird view or something like that, or you wanted to have it spin around, that might be seen, and it's going to add a little bit more to the realism because that's how an actual table is made. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to go through is going to be uh, subdivision. And I don't mean subsurf or subdivision multiplier. What I mean is that a lot of people uh, will go ahead and say they're making a car. And they're making out of one object and they get to the part where there's the hood ornament. And they want to, you know, oh well, we got the hood ornament here. Let's go ahead and subdivide that a few times. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and do this here. We're going to add a quick uh, loop tool and we're going to add a circle and we're going to extrude it out and bam that's great now we go on to the next part uh, well we need to add some loop cuts the, but I'm hitting control R and, and, and nothing is really happening the only option we have it looks like is a couple loop cuts here and you think well that doesn't make any sense why can't I loop cut it well if you're experienced in Blender the light probably just came on but if you're not experienced in Blender you're about to be a little bit educated. <laughs> you can only add loop cuts through what's called quads. Quads are basically four vertices. One, two, three, four. If you have more than four vertices, that's what's called an ingon, which is what you have here. You see all these little vertices are connected to this square. But you can't add a loop cut because a loop cut doesn't understand where it needs to connect to. So it can't go all the way through because there's ingons in the way. Same for if you only had three vertices, that's called the try. You can't add a loop cut through that. You can't knife cut it though. And you can actually use the knife tool with K here and go over here and say connect to that one. But it doesn't work out right because now if you were to go through here and connect each one of these, you would go, okay, now I've got four vertices and now I have it. You still will not be able to do it because the topology is completely messed up. So model the core of everything you need to do first don't get in a hurry and go well I want to work on whatever you need that needs to be the last thing all the small details need to be saved to the end subdivision is is a great thing there's a lot a lot of uses to use subdivide but there's a lot of reasons why you wait to use it don't rush to do it or you're gonna waste your entire time and the worst part is is that you could do all of this and then go, okay, I'm going to work on this side, and I do all this side, and then realize that you can't do anything, and you've wasted an hour, and essentially you either have to hold on to that control Z or start over. And, and nobody really wants to start over, and that's kind of a big mistake I see people make. Uh, and 
let's see on to the next one we have make your model first which is actually basically the same thing do all your modeling first then do your materials uh, I see also at least this is my personal experience I don't know if a lot of people do it but when I'm working I'm really really excited to see what it's gonna look like so I'll quickly hit shift Z add a couple of lights in there and add some background and then the one thing that I've modeled or the part that I've modeled I'll go ahead and put a material on it like this and then continue on and then I'll go oh, that looks great okay let's go back let's you know work on this one here let's uh, add a couple loop guts we'll shrink it down and then add a material on that one and you need to do all the materials in one step because if you decide to materialize that and you set your UV maps up and you make all that look pretty and nice you may realize you hate it you may want to use a different material and then you are basically just wasting your time it doesn't hurt anything but you waste so much of your time messing around with something that it's not even ready to be done with okay so the next thing that I'm going to talk about is sampling is one of the biggest things I see a lot of people do and I'm going to see if I can kind of get the effect that I'm looking for here I'm just going to do something crazy and we're going to try to cause a little bit of issues I'm just going to add a glass modifier here bring down the roughness well I can't quite get it to work the good thing about EVC is this kind of fixed the problem. Anyway, the point is you'll see little specks, little white dots, and little different colored dots all over your renders, and you go, what the heck's going on? Oh, I'm only rendering at 128 samples. I need to crank that up to 1,000. So then you render it, and say half the spots are gone. And they're actually called fireflies, by the way. That's an industry-wide term for them. They're called fireflies. Uh, you go, okay, I'm happy. I've only got three of these little white dots opposed to the 30 and you spend 15 minutes rendering your image or 500 minutes depending on whatever crazy thing you're working on the point of the matter is is that if you're trying to fix something by raising the samples you're probably not doing it right there there is needs to have uh, a thousand samples I've rendered things as high as 1500 it doesn't but you don't usually need it it's usually a waste of time so I'll tell you a quick fix for getting rid of the little fireflies little white dots is you come down here if you're using uh, blender 2.8 you come down here uh, onto your context menu. Actually, let's go ahead and switch to cycles. Okay, here we go. You can actually see the little dots. Perfect. So these little white dots here, which is actually just the shadow coming through here. But these little dots you'll see sometimes occasionally peeking out everywhere. And you know what? The real reason why you don't see them is I have actually already changed it. Oh, no, I haven't. Okay. So here under clamping. So if you go to your uh, context tab, your, your basic first tab. I don't know why it's called context. That seems like a silly name. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you go down to light paths, you go to clamping, and you change your direct light to 1 and your indirect to 1. Now with EV or 2.8 I should say, they put that as 10. If you're using uh, 2.79, they're both going to be at 0. So you go ahead and just change them as well. And they're a little bit different location. I'm going to quickly start up 2.79 here so I can show anybody who in my opinion is using the better version so if you were using EV or not EV 2.79 you would actually go down to the same tab you would go to your render tab and then you would go down to where is it at is it under sampling yeah under sampling you're gonna change it from 1 to 1 just like you did on 2.8 I'm gonna edit all that out Okay, so if you're using 2.9, you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to click on the little render tab here. And instead of under light path, it's going to be under sampling. You'll see clamp and direct and clamp indirect. You'll just change those here. So you don't have to look for it in light paths. It'll be under samples on 2.79. 2.8, it's under light paths. Okay, so the next thing is fill your scene. It's one of the worst things I see people do. They'll spend the time to make an object, a render, look amazing looks really good but it doesn't look right it looks almost realistic except for things are, are don't make sense there's no shadows or there's just the one shadow there's no reflections there's nothing like that you can't make a realistic object in blender or any actually any software without filling your scene an HDR does kind of help uh, it will give you reflections but you need to break up the actual light that you've created your light here is basically reflecting here and here so it doesn't make any sense to
just have that in your object. So if you've spent a lot of time making the most perfect model you, or table you've ever seen, and you're super excited, and you show everybody, and and people are saying it doesn't look very realistic, and you feel sad, you go, well, that doesn't make any sense. It looks great. Uh, one of the best things you can do for yourself as an artist is to get a free add-on. It's called Blender Kit, and you could just get it from the add-on directory if you look under Blender Kit Asset Library. Okay, so that that's one of the best ones, and I'll show you what it is right here. So Blender Kit is actually completely free; you don't have to pay for it. Although they have a premium version, so you get a lot more things. But if you click on, they even give you a bunch of materials too. Uh, so if you wanted to say create a paper, and no, this isn't a sponsored video or anything, but I'm just going to show. If you were to drag it right there. It takes a few seconds, it's downloading the image, and it's gonna apply that material. That's cool. But the main thing I wanted to show you was if you click on this square right here, these are actual uh, models. If you click on free only, you can click on here if you're doing an interior, and it's gonna show you uh, a few things that you could do. And, it, and it's literally the same thing. So say you wanted to slap a blender on top of the table, because that seems like a natural place for a blender. That actually was completely in, unintentional. I literally didn't mean to grab the blender. And then you scale it up by 10. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's scale that back down to... There we go. That looks a little bit better. And then you place the object and, you know, put it on the table. We'll move it on the Z a little bit. Bam. Okay. And we got a nice little blender. And I'm not spending a lot of time on everything because clearly that's a giant blender. Uh, there you go. That helps break the scene up, breaks the lighting up. And add a few more things. Okay, you want to add a couch, slap it on there. And the biggest thing that I think a lot of people are afraid of is I don't want to add other people's models into my scene. I didn't create those models. You know, I don't think it's fair. That's not the point. You're not actually focusing on those models. Those are background images. When you set up your camera, we're going to hit zero. You're going to, you know, come over here and, and set your camera up. And all I did was press zero on the numpad to get to the camera. If you're a real, big, real, real beginner, uh, I, I guess I could try to really tell you some of the shortcut keys. But I'm actually using shortcut keys from 2.79, uh, which you could just do in uh, your settings. But anyway, to move your camera around, you just hit shift F after you hit zero, and you can move it around like a first-person shooter. So anyway, all these other objects that you add in, they're not really the focus points. You you want to show what you've modeled, but you want those in the background to help break up shadows, break up lights, add reflections, and add a little bit more realism. Uh, and then the other thing is don't subsurf your object the way that most people on YouTube seem to be telling you. Nobody does it that way. If you look at my geometry on both these objects, okay, so we're going to go ahead and take off subdivision on, on this one here. And you notice I have these lines here. Now, a lot of people will tell you when you do subsurf, and we'll, we're going to actually add a cube in for this just to make it a little bit easier. And okay, So we have a cube here. We're going to hit Control-3 to add a level 3 subdivision surface on there. And now we're in edit mode. Now, I've seen on this on, on a lot of YouTube videos, especially when I started, people were like, go ahead and hit Control R to add a loop cut and then just slide it all the way over. Perfect. That's one of the worst things you could do. You never want to actually slide it on top of each other because now you've got four vertices on top of four other vertices, which, you know, is f not fine. It's, it's really a bad idea because, first of all, you're going to have a hard time selecting which vertices. I mean, there's been often times where, look, I just selected all four of these vertices and the face isn't highlighted because I have a different set of vertices. So that's a really horrible way. So if you wanted to move them, you can even see it just doesn't make sense. So don't do it that way. If you want to add a loop cut, which you, you will, and I use them all the time, just make it close. Not only that, it gives it a nice beveled curve instead of making it super sharp because in 3D, you can make objects really, really sharp, unintentionally. More sharp than they would be even in real life. So you want a little bit of curve on everything. Even a razor knife has a little bit of a curve. I mean, you can't see it, but it isn't two edges touching each other. It just isn't. It doesn't make sense. So always leave a little bit of space on there. Don't stack vertices on top of vertices. No good will ever come. 
in the worst case scenarios, if in the beginning, if you do it, you know, and you spend three hours modeling something, and then you go back to do a couple minor changes, that's going to screw you up. You're going to have to completely overwork, overload everything. I mean, overload. That doesn't make any sense. Sorry, I had a warning that something was being overloaded, and now I can't think. It's going to basically just screw you up. That's all it's really going to do. So you think, well, that's it, you know. Then you got a little blender kit thing here. I love this little blender kit. It's great to fill out a scene. I don't usually use a lot of them. I usually use like a one or two objects just to kind of help fill in the scene. See, there's a little couch I forgot to show you. They always come in real small, so you always want to scale them up a little bit. Look at me getting all sidetracked. Oh, I'm recording this video like six times, and then I'm just going to add all the stuff in there I like and remove the stuff I don't. So hopefully everything I'm saying now won't be there. All right, that's been my uh, six and a half blender tips. Hopefully you guys found it helpful, and if you didn't, then give me a thumbs up. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. That was really lame. Don't, don't do what I say. Do whatever you want. Live your life. We'll see you next time.